uh, on what we share with you about uh, Toki. Okay, so there is going to be plenty of time for media to ask questions and to have one-on-one -on -one interviews. So we have plenty of room, as you can see here, to be able to do those interviews, and we wanna do what we can do to support you in your news gathering. Also, for all registered press, you will receive a press release via email. We also, in an effort to be environmentally friendly, only printed a small quantity of the press releases. However, uh, myself, Lorena, who's here in the room, as well as Alexa, who you met at the uh, check-in desk, they both will have printed copies of the press release for you, so you have something to refer to with names and spellings and those sorts of things. But rest assured that you will all receive the press release via email. Um, okay, so today, as, as you know, we are gonna hear from Mayor Daniela Levine Taba. We're gonna hear from Mr. Eduardo Albor, who is the CEO of the Dolphin Company which, as you know, is the parent company of Miami Aquarium. We're gonna hear from Pritam Singh, environmentalist, philanthropist, chairman of Sea Shepherd, and co-founder of Friends of Toki. <clears throat> and we have, as our special guest, Jim Irsay, uh, Indianapolis Colts owner and CEO. <laughs> Thank you all. Okay. So before we move on to the heart of the matter and while we're um, all here, I did also want to, um, on behalf of our hosts, uh, thank Maria Marty, Christine Selina Coulter, and Mike Zimmer from Parks and Rec, not only for being with us today, but for your work and your partnership in making things better every day at the Miami Aquarium. Also, Councilwoman Regalado, <laughs> please stand. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're also joined by Lumi Elder, Raynell Morris. Uh, Raynell, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and also Dr. Guillermo Sanchez. Uh, Dr. Sanchez is the president of the European Association for Aquatic Animals, and we really do appreciate all of our special guests joining us today. Okay, now, the news of why we are here. For the first time ever, a not-for-profit organization dedicated to animal welfare, in this case specifically ensuring that Lolita, our beloved orca, receives the highest quality of life. For the first time, this nonprofit organization is coming together with a private company that cares for animals, and they're coming together on common ground. Just a little while ago, Friends of Lolita, co-founded by Pritam Singh, and the Miami Aquarium, represented by Mr. Eduardo, Eduardo Albor, uh, signed a collaborative agreement to work together to return Lolita to her home waters. Congratulations to Mr. Singh and Mr. Albor. The place that we are now <clears throat> is the reality of a dream for Lolita's future. It's made possible in large part thanks to the leadership of Mayor Daniela Levine Cava. Mayor, I'd like to ask you to share with our guests your remarks on this extraordinary event. Please join me in welcoming the mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Daniela Levine Cava, mayor of Miami-Dade County, and I want to thank everyone for convening here as the Miami Seaquarium and the Dolphin Company share updates on the health and well-being of Toki. We're here because we all care deeply about the health and well-being of this beautiful creature. And I'm very happy to be here for this historic announcement to begin the process to return Toki to her home waters. So many have worked, prayed, and hoped for this result for many, many years. Last year, at this time, I joined this aquarium and the Dolphin Company, along with Commissioner Regalado, the commissioner of the district, for their announcement to bring a third party veterinarian to perform an independent medical evaluation of Lolita Toki's health. And last June, the results were publicly issued, which we were glad to see demonstrated improvement. And in December, I joined Friends of Toki's Day of Listening Conference, where we gathered input and feedback directly from the public. Toki has been under the care of our county's 
finest marine veterinary experts and dedicated stakeholders. The county, the Sequarium, friends of Toki, Lolita, and the Dolphin Company have collaborated throughout and have always strived to do everything that we can to do right by her. I want to emphasize, as long as she has been in our care, she has been cared for. And she's had the support of a very strong community of concerned residents behind her. They've advocated for many, many years. So to all of you, to all of you who care, we want to thank you for your care and concern for Toki. And I too have been both professionally and personally invested in her care. My administration has been a longtime supporter of Toki's long-term health. And under my leadership, the last two and a half years as mayor, Miami-Dade County has successfully overseen the transfer of ownership of the Miami Seaquarium to the Dolphin Company who in partnership with the Friends of Toki have stewarded her medical care. Because of that newly minted partnership and the increased trust and transparency, I believe we are standing here today for this momentous announcement. The most important thing is Toki's long-term well-being and together guided by the experts will continue to do what is best for her. And we are also here to, thanks, to thank the enormous generosity of the advocates who are making this journey possible. Thank you to Pritam and to Jim Ersay for your deep care and investment in Toki's well-being. <laughs> and thanks to all of you who are here today for your unwavering commitment to this incredible creature. Estoy muy feliz de estar aquí para este anuncio histórico de comenzar el proceso para devolver a Toki a sus aguas natales, lo que tantos han pedido y esperado por durante muchos años. Bajo mi liderazgo, el condado de Miami-Dade supervisó con éxito la transferencia de la propiedad de Miami Seaquarium a Dolphin Company, quienes están cuidando de la salud de la ballena junto a Friends of Toki. Y es gracias a esta nueva alianza y a la confianza y transparencia que hemos enfatizado tanto es que estamos aquí escuchando este anuncio tan importante hoy. Lo más importante es el bienestar a largo plazo de Toki. Juntos, guiados por los expertos, continuaremos haciendo lo mejor para ella. Gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And as the mayor has mentioned, there has been an incredible amount of collaboration in regard to, to really making significant improvements in Toki's welfare. Um, and so I wanted to also take a moment to thank Toki's dedicated care team at the Miami Seaquarium. Of course, they've been caring for her for decades, uh, and uh, they really deserve uh, thanks and appreciation. Um, I also would like to, uh, to introduce you just momentarily to uh, Charles Vinnick. Charles is the co-founder of Friends of Lolita, and a very important part of not only making Toki's life better, but also helping to make this a day possible as well. So thank you very much, Charles. So now I would like to invite Mr. Eduardo Albor, as you know, the CEO of the uh, Dolphin Company, uh, the parent company of uh, Miami Seaquarium. Thank you, Mr. Albor. Thank you. Uh, Debbie, can I speak from that? You can speak wherever <laughs> you want. <laughs> also, we have your picture here on the screen. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so speak wherever you want, but don't touch that. No, no problem. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you for uh, allowing me to borrow your, your place. Uh, good morning all, and uh, I feel a little bit more comfortable standing here and looking at all of you, and uh, I have to confess my Spanish is not as good as the uh, major's Spanish. <laughs> so I, I, if I'm allowed to speak in English, uh, uh, this is a very special day for uh, all of you and, and even for me. Uh, it is amazing to see how many things you can achieve in one year when actions 
take place of, of words. Many people speak in many words, but uh, when you, you make them uh, to become actions, you can achieve many more things that you can do by speaking. Nevertheless, don't underestimate the power of words. And I'll, sh I'll share with you uh, quickly just uh, three situations that happened uh, a few months before or during the process of uh, taking, uh, uh, you know, taking Miami Sequarium that make me now be here. Three, three things. Uh, during the process, uh, after we execute the documents, still we need to go through the approval of the county. And it's when lawyers start working on the reviewing the contract and, and doing their work. And there was, was a moment that uh, the lawyers told me uh, um, there were negotiations and, and the county is asking some changes to the, to the contract. And I was always looking to what were those changes. And I was surprised to see that the, the, lower, the lawyers were paying more attention to changes on the well-being of the animals, and, and, and including in the contract. More than economic changes or legal changes, is always looking to the well-being of the animals. And I happen to understand this when uh, one day my lawyers tell me, Mayor Levine wants to speak directly with you. <laughs> All right. So they put me in a, in a video conference with Mayor, that's the first time I met her. And uh, she only asked me two, three things, and all of them related to the well-being of the animals. Uh, one of them is she, asked, she was asking and expecting for us to allow the uh, external vets or, or independent vets were allowed to come and look to the animals, which was never, uh, never was done and was not in the contract. And from my part, I said, why not? After my people were telling me, no, but this can create this conflict, and I, I said that we're gonna do it, so I put it in the contract. And then we went through the whole process, and the first thing is, the day I'm at the county offices, when the, the, the hearing was gonna, uh, our issue was in the list of uh, 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 items uh, to be discussed in that hearing, that the hearing that day I was there. I think at 9, 9 a.m., 9 30 was the, the the, the hearing, but uh, anyway, I got a call and, and somebody approaches to me and say, Major Levin wants to speak with you. I say, well, I hope that is not <laughs> bad news, but no, uh, Major just tell me, um, we're gonna be discussing the approval or, or not of the transfer of the contract. Um, all issues, I don't know what's gonna happen because it's the decision of many people. But I want to ask you something. Sure, Major, um, if this is approved, please, Open your heart, open your mind, and let your company talk to the other group, uh, groups, to the, uh, to the groups, to the people who's interested in this. Let it happen. Open your heart and speak with them. That, that was her final uh, request or recommendation. Then the process went on, and things were approved, and here we are. But I called my attention and said, <laughs> how many things the mayor should have in her mind. And, and it's just said that she's taking a moment to still think about Lolita. <laughs> and it caught my attention how important it was for her and made me aware how important it was probably should be also for me. That was the first thing that caught my attention. And then between the moment that was approved and the lawyers put documents together, and we took management, uh, I wanted to go to Miami's Aquarium uh, before everybody knew me at the place and go as a mystery client, mystery uh, shopper, which is a mystery guest. So I go on Sunday. I don't have to say everybody. I pay my ticket, full price, uh, and I go with my daughter. Uh, the second of my daughters. She's animalist, like, I mean, more than anybody, any of you. She loves animals. She has three dogs in there, sleeping in her room. <laughs> Uh, every day, but anyway, I go with her, and we go, we, we walk around the place. Obviously, she knew that uh, we were going to take interest in management of the Miami Sequoia, and we live at the very, very end to go and see Lolita's uh, uh, show. So finally, we go, and the place was full of children. Uh, I, I think it was it was in a Sunday. It was full of family, children, all of them excited, and all of them. Uh, uh, enjoying uh, uh, the show of Lolita, and I was just like a child also, and clapping and having a great time, until I hear my daughter say, hey dad, I have to go. I said, anything's wrong? 
Um, but you, um, you need to go to the restroom? No, 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 I have to go. Why we need to go? I mean, this is, this is great. I cannot be more time here because this place is too small for, for, the, for Lolita. What do you mean? It is, it is too small. I feel so bad. Let, I have to go or I will cry. <laughs> All right, let's go. But I was saying, I mean, she's 22, 23 years, and she's telling me, I have to go or I will cry. But that told me, that told me, and said, I mean, the perception that she had, she said, this place is too small. And she told me when we leave, if we ever take management of this place, you promise me that you will see how to improve this. I promise I will do it. Just a few days after the major uh, made her final recommendation. And then in between those last days, I received so many emails from people asking me hey, uh, about uh, making this happen and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails, which I barely can only look at one or two every day. But I don't ask, don't ask me why. I saw Pritam Singh email, <laughs> hundreds of emails. I saw him, I didn't know who was him, and I read him, his email, and I answered, he was asking me, uh, uh, he was creating this organization, Friends of Lolita, invited me to be part of Friends of Lolita, and I told him, uh, as soon as we take uh, management, we speak. He was humble enough to wait, and then he came back and said, when we meet, I said, give him a few more days, uh, uh, we just recently took management, and he comes to me and he tells me, after a few weeks, hey, we want to see what we can do together, but uh, we, need to, we need to look and give an opportunity to, to Lolita. So this happens within probably a couple of months, and then I changed my mind. I have to promise you because uh, the, my first, the, when we were planning and taking uh, my MC Quarant, it was not exactly the plan of doing what we are doing right now, but I had to change. And, and you, need, you need to open your, your mind and look to what is probably not your plan, but hear other people. And this is what I'm telling you right now. I know that all of you or most of you are thinking that about the future of Lolita and that how great it's going to be for her. But I tell you this, this is beyond Lolita. This is beyond Lolita. She is going to become a symbol. Lolita is the name of a bridge. Lolita is the name of a bridge, and that's how I see it beyond her. She is a bridge that will be connected to points of land. And over a river, built over a river called Tolerance. And, and connecting two points of land called communication. How two different points of uh, thinking or two different positions that have always been discussing one to each other and separated by a river called Tolerance. Now we are building a bridge called Lolita and connecting two groups, two tribes, two, two, two cultures uh, above, a, above a river called Intolerance and making things happen. Lolita is a bridge that is connecting two generations, that is connecting two different mentalities and showing the world how, great, how many great things can be achieved if you just walk from one point to another with the vision of we all are part of one world. We all are only uh, spots that have to be connected and more than just moving Lolita to a place where she will be better, she will become a symbol for us and the future generations, how many things can be achieved when we, besides words, we take actions. This is, this is my, my main dream that I live, I make a point to the new generations, to the current people that Stop discussing. Let's sit. Let's talk. Let's be tolerant. And let's look to make things happen. Thank you for your time. And God bless you all.
Thank you, Mr. Albor. I think that's a wonderful picture of Lolita as a bridge between uh, two. Oh, oh, this is this is also a lovely picture. <laughs> that's the boss. That's uh, my, my boss called Cosmo. <laughs> uh, but I think that uh, Lolita as a bridge between two uh, two points of light. Uh, and, and making it possible for organizations that thought they were on opposite teams to realize that they are actually on the same team. Jim, I don't know if I'm, it's certainly offensive maybe for me to make a sports quote, but uh, I'm sure you'll have more to say about that. Um, but thank you so much, Mr. Albor. Um, and and Pridham, would you care to share with us your, your part of this journey with uh, Lolita? Yeah, but you know, what do you say after that, <laughs> right? Um, you know, I'd actually like Jim to speak next, if that's okay, and and then I'll I'll do I'll do to use another sports uh, analogy. I'll do clean up. Okay. So we're not going to mention the Patriots. No? Okay. All right. Please, Jim, Jim. Jim, we have your baby up on the screen as well. I know it. I he's right over there. There, there's Drake. And 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 uh, there is Drake with with Michelle and I, and there he is right there. He's he's uh, he's wondering if he can come up here, but not right now, buddy. Hold on. <laughs> um, but but thank you so much, and and um, everyone, thank you for being here. Uh, uh, Pritam, thanks for the introduction, and, and and Mayor, it's certainly an honor to have you here, and and um, and just it's it's such an exciting day uh, to hear. Eduardo, um, just such beautiful words because um, the analogy and the symbolism of kind of what he was painting um, is, I think, the way that we all feel. And, and I know um, Charles and, and Pridham and Eduardo and I last night uh, had a long conversation. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just blessed to be with others that have such big hearts and have um, really the same sort of intention, um, just the humility and, and the love and, and, and just the thoughtfulness of going into this endeavor. And, and uh, particularly with Eduardo, you know, um, I didn't know when I first um, was going to talk to him just what, what to expect on, on kind of um, how he would be coming at things. But, you know, he's a remarkable man, just a passionate man. Um, his grandson's actually hiding in his daughter's stomach right there, the first baby. So um, that, that just a adds to um, the joy of uh, these days, if you will. And, and um, I just, um, you know, for me, it, it's um, such a blessing that, that um, you know, just when I first started talking to Eduardo, I knew and um, what, what a good man he was, you know, what a good heart he had and just, just a passionate guy and a guy who can get down to earth. And I, you know, I just believe in, you know, getting in, into um, as real talk as you can. And, you know, I'm very much a, a spiritualist and, a, and a, a philosopher, if you will. Um, and, and I don't shy away. Uh, I, I know uh, Pridham and I, I, you know, have, have admired, uh, you know, some of his Buddhist um, uh, understandings and, and I've studied all sorts of um, religions in my, my time um, and so, uh, certainly um, in this case I, I think you know when we, when we come together I, I just try to talk about um, the purity of love you know that, that honestly um, I know there's a lot of factions in the world and there's Democrats and Republicans and there's um, you know just just all, all sorts of different names for people that represent stances um, in the human existence. But I just, I try to think about unconditional love and, and have the purity of that, um, not tarnished at all, if you will, um, because I think my involvement in it is just that pure and simple, is that, you know, I believe, um, you know, being of service to others on this earth and um, uh, trying to, um, you know, bring, bring love and, 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 and like Eduardo said, tolerance, understanding in those things. Um, that, that's so important and, and we have symbolisms um, and moments that happen like this that, 
that have so many connective um, aspects to it. And, and um, I just, uh, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited about being part of, of um, Lolita's uh, journey um, to, to, to really great excitement and, and, and freedom and, and, and things I know that she wants, you know, just being with her and um, feeling her energy. And, and, and she's special now. I mean, she is the Cal Ripton Jr. of Wales, you know. She's, she's the Joni Mitchell, uh, I, I mean, who's, who's come through so much. She is one, one tough uh, creature. And, um, uh, you know, she, you know, it's amazing. I, ever since I was a little kid, I loved whales, just loved whales, just, you know, because the power and the greatness of them and how gentle they are and, and just, um, you know, how they interact in, in a world and you, you know, see them come and play with people on boats and, and never at all, you know, knock the boat too hard and, and, and just the remarkableness um, I think that we all have and, and we all want to have, um, you know, pictures of our dogs because I think the connection with, with dogs and with other creatures, whales, it just, it, it's, it's so special because um, um, there's just this, this aspect that, that is so pure and innocent in, in, in these creatures. And, and um, you know, from when I first started getting involved with this, um, you know, really, I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm blessed uh, with my journey um, through life and, and business and, and that sort of thing. And, and like, you know, like I was saying up there by Debbie, you know, definitely a sports analogy because, you know, we have trainers and doctors and we have, you know, the, 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 the great players, the stars like Lolita is. And, uh, and um, we get them ready to, to, to play and and get them ready to to be as great as they can be and um you know it's been remarkable to see her fight back with her health and um Pridham certainly has been so generous in bringing antibiotics medicine ice chips you know extra additional purity of waters um to partner with eduardo why um she's been uh, still here in, in miami and uh look at i mean we, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, okay? I mean, um, you know, I, I knew getting into this, you know, it, you know, it was going to be, a, you know, big number. I mean, it's going to be not seven figures, eight figures, and it's going to be, you know, getting into, um, you know, literally getting her ready to go, getting a 747 or a C-17 ready to go, getting everyone in that transport ready to go, building this netting, and it's so great to have um, Ray Nell here from... Um, the Lumi tribe uh, as an elder and, and, and that's so special to me the spirituality and, and, and their deep belief how they're connected with, with whales and, and these killer whales in such a special way um, and I relate to that totally because I, you know, I, I believe it without a doubt and I know Lolita wants to get to free waters I don't care what anyone says she wants, she, she's lived this long to have this opportunity. And my only mission is I'm a three-year-old boy that sees a whale that he loves that wants to help this whale get free. I mean, that's all, that's, that's my only intention in this. I, I, I don't bring any stances to it. I, I just bring love. I, I've been blessed, like I said, when I've been out there in business and I've had been blessed with some great successes. I knew when I came back that I would be able to help the world more. I, I think that's the thing that, that, that to me I love doing, you know, whether it's with the band and collection where we don't charge anything at all for tickets and we just do it for the service of the arts and connect other charities like Kick the Stigma um, against, you know, stigmatizing mental health diseases and things. And, and, and all the things that, that I'm involved in it's it's really just such a joy um, to be able to um, make the world a better place. Paul Allen, uh, my my late friend, uh, co-founder of Microsoft, from the Seahawks, who, you know, who did so so much in his life and was an incredible uh, person with his generosity to humanity. Um, and so, you know, you see 
and, and you learn from people like that. And, and, and for me, um, you know, humility, you know, isn't, you know, thinking less of yourself. It's thinking about yourself less. And, and, you know, to me, it's like through service, like I rather, you know, there's nothing wrong with people that float around on $200 million yachts. But for me, that's just not my thing. You know, I, I'd rather, um, you know, be out in the world and, and evoking change. And I know this is that, you know, millions and millions of people out there given the opportunity would do the same thing I'm doing, you know, um, and they do it every day by being, you know, service work nurses and, you know, contributing time and working in all sorts of ways um, for the good of, of humanity, for the lack of a better word. And so we all do our part. And, and uh, you know, this is going to be, uh, it's, it's not a short-range commitment. It's a long-range commitment. It's, it's about, um, you know, getting this, this sea park built, for the lack of a better word, in Washington State with the netting. It's about getting, you know, Lolita and the two dolphins out there, um, you know, somewhere between, you know, probably six and nine months from now. Um, but it takes a village. It, it's to started with the mayor and the councilwoman and others that are here that have helped so much. And, you know, we're working with people in Washington, D.C. to get through as much red tape as fast as we can. Um, and, you know, you know, Lolita's mom at 89 years old is swimming in those waters in a pod of 12 whales, and there's 17 pods out there um, of uh, southern killer orca whales. And her pod, um, as Charles will say, you know, there isn't a, a hundred percent certainty that that's her mother and she's 89, but it's a very high certainty that that is the case, and we'll probably be able to test her at some point. Um, and that's the goal: is is you know step by step, but you know, you get Lolita, you get her ready, you know, she gets on that plane, she gets in the water there, she gets acclimated with the dolphins, and then she starts swimming around, and the trainers are there. We're going to have to have housing for the trainers. We're going to have to have a warehouse for her food. We're going to have to have a setup where, you know, there's constant care, teaching her how to catch fish again so she can eat fish because she doesn't know how to do that. She's been in captivity for that long. And so that process hopefully will lead so eventually her getting out of the gate, getting free, getting with her pod, being in the you know um, Pacific Ocean and swimming free. And I don't put, look at, I mean, no matter what happens here, it's going to be a great tale from my estimation. I mean, people say, well, Kiko got out and then he died after this amount of time. And was it a good thing? Yes, it's a good thing. I mean, you ask someone, and, and I don't want to say, you know, it's like a retirement home or something. And they say, I want to go home. I don't want to stay here. Well, it might be better if you stay.